Thank you, Felicia. And hi, everybody, and welcome to today's class. If you don't know me yet, my name is Birgit Koopsen, and I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts, and I am in the Netherlands. And today's class is going to be all about gel printing with a thread and yarn, um, which is a fun uh, thing to do. Printing with thread and yarn is really um, inexpensive, uh, quite easy, and you get a beautiful organic prints. So let's just turn the camera to my hands and then I will show you what we uh, are going to do today. So I'm going to work on my five by seven inch jelly arch gel printing plate. Um, but you can do this technique uh, on any size or shape of gel plate, whatever you have on hand. And I got some uh, yarn and thread around me that I will use for my prints today. And you can get all kinds of yarn um, in different um, thickness, different um, uh, how do you call it? Like a pattern. It's not really like a pattern, but like a, a thinner st string and a thicker string all together in one thread. Or you can just um, have something like eyelash uh, yarn, which is uh, this that has like little strings hanging on the side, which will give a beautiful organic print. You can also have something that looks almost like cro crochet um kind of yarn that you can use or with little um bubbles little bulbs i don't know how to call them but they create a beautiful texture also on the plate and then of course you can just just use like a sewing thread um, in different thickness or even also with something on it that creates uh, extra texture. Uh, you could use something like a string, like this is the kind of string that's being used to uh, for meat, for instance, or something like, um, this is called um, hemp rope. And the one with the hemp rope is going to be the last one that I'm going to show you because that's going to be a messy one. Uh, and I don't want to have all the fibers everywhere on my plate and on my brayer already at the beginning of the class because they will come back in every um, print I will create after that unless I clean everything really well. It's really worth making the mess and it's absolutely worth trying. But um, so I'm going to leave that until the end of the class. And we're going to start with the more safe options. <clears throat> Sorry, as you can see, I have not cleaned my gel plate. And if you have watched more of my videos, you know that I usually don't clean my gel plate. Um, after a session, if there's still a little bit of paint left on the gel plate, I just leave it on until the next session because I really like the extra texture and um, distressed look, the extra interest that it gives when you pull your first print. If you start printing with a clean gel plate, the first couple of prints are going to look so clean and I really like it if they are a little bit more distressed and a little bit more crunchy. So there's still a little bit of leaves, something like leaves left on the plate. They will probably totally pick up in the first print and that's just fine with me. So I'm going to show you a couple of prints that I made before using a uh, thread and yarn. So on this one, the thinner lines that you see are created by the uh, sewing thread. And here you see the eyelash thread. And I don't know if you can uh, see it, but it's like very detailed. And it's almost like you look at an, a picture that's taken from the air and it's like um, somewhere near a river or something, the landscape there which makes it really organic so here you have thicker uh, lines that is uh, being created with the thicker yarn like this one and also a little bit of those thinner lines you see in here so they were like leftovers on the plate 
And uh, this is like a first print where I used the thread and uh, I actually used the thread as a mask. So it's not um, the paint from the plate is not transferring to the to the paper because the thread is in between the paper and the plate. So I'm just going to show you how to create all these different types of layers using uh, thread and yarn with acrylic paint. So today I'm only focusing on acrylic paint. And um, <clears throat> I'm using my favorite brands of acrylic paint, which are Liquitex Basics, um, Amsterdam Standard, and the Winster & Newton Galleria. And all of them are uh, also available at Michael's. But these are my favorite colors for gel printing, or not colors, uh, brands for gel printing. Uh, I really like the consistency of these paints. So I already have some uh, papers ready with just color. So I haven't done any, I have not added any texture. I haven't used any uh, tools to create pattern or something like that. It's just background color because I want to build up layers using the uh, yarn and the thread and um, I don't want to waste too much time on printing the basic um, first layers. So I've already done that. So I can go and print straight onto those backgrounds. So um, usually with one, uh, adding one layer of thread and yarn, you can do at least two and sometimes even three prints. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm just going to select the papers that I want to print on. And I think I'm just going to start with printing on this one. And um, so I need a contrasting color to print with to make, um, make the pattern stand out. <clears throat> so this means that for this one, I need quite a dark color, something like, uh, like a purple or maybe mix a purple with uh, a greenish blue. I think I'm actually going to do that. I'm just going to use these two colors and adding a little bit of both colors to the plate. And then roll them out with my brayer. I'm using a soft rubber brayer from Speedball. This is quite personal which brayer you like to use, but I really like soft rubber because um, it doesn't like slide over the paint where a hard rubber brayer sometimes kind of slides over the paint and doesn't really um, spread it but more like moves it around and I can already see a couple of those thinner threads from the hemp rope that fell on my plate when I just showed the hemp rope but that's okay I mean you can also see them on my brayer but as we are going to create an organic texture anyway it's fine and I'm just going to leave it like this and the first thing that I'm going to do is add some of that sewing thread. And as you can probably see, this has been used before. So it's a little bit sturdy, but I can just pull it apart a little bit. So you can use the thread um, many, many times until it's uh, so clogged up with paint that you can't use it anymore. So don't throw it away. As I said, this is a very cheap way of printing and you can just use it over and over again. So I'm just going to put this on top and this is going to act as a mask. So when I put this paper on top of it, um, I will only pick up the paint that's uh, in between and the paint that's underneath the thread and the yarn will stay on the plate and not transfer to the paper. So I'm going to rub very well. I have to make sure that I go with my fingers in there because especially the 
uh, eyelash yarn is quite thick. So I have to make sure that I press down the paper with my fingers in the open areas because otherwise it will not pick up the paint and you will not get a uh, uh, crisp um, outline of the yarn and the thread. So I'm just going to pick it up and see if I lift it up a little bit and see if I picked up enough paint. And I think I did, so I can remove my paper. And then this is my first print. <clears throat> Sorry. So you can see uh, the lines of the thread and the yarn. It's not as detailed as the ones that I showed before, because this is similar to um, this one where uh, where I used the thread and the yarn as a mask. And which one you like best is uh, totally personal. It's a matter of taste. It's also a matter of what you want to use your prints for, right? Sometimes um, you like this better than uh, one that has more detailed lines like this one. But as I said, you can make multiple um, prints with only one set of yarn and um, and thread. So you can make two or three prints that are that look totally different uh, in one go. So now I have all this leftover paint uh, on the plate, and I'm just going to lift it up and show you if you can see it uh, how detailed and how fine these lines are. So what I'm going to do now is, um, this is already dry or at least almost dry. So I want it to dry completely because um, I can't pick it up anymore. It's not, not wet enough. And, uh, but I want to make sure it's completely dry before I add another layer of paint because otherwise I would just mix the paint that's already on the plate with my paint and then lose um, lose all the details. So I have to make sure that it's dry before I add another color of paint. Now, what would happen if I, um, let me see, I'm just going to find the best background to print this on. And I think something contrasting like the orange and the teal actually might look really nice with the purple and the blue. I think I will just use this one. But um, just imagine that I would roll out um, a layer of paint, it can be only one color or it can be multiple colors. But what if I would roll out a solid layer of paint and print on um, a background that already has paint on it? I would, wouldn't would see anything of this layer anymore because it would just be covered with the paint that's already on the plate. So I can do two things. I can either add color another color of paint on the plate and just pull it on white paper. And that's what my print is going to be, this with an extra color. Or I can add another layer of thread and um, have that solid color, but also some open areas that show the color of my background paper. And that's what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to use this the yarn with the uh, variety of thickness uh, on it. And I need a color that is uh, opaque because I want to cover up the areas around the thread of my background paper. So I have to find um, a color that is opaque. So I don't know if you know this, but if you buy any paints that are um, professional paints, like the ones that I'm using, and also paints like Golden or something like that, they have an indication on the, on the tube 
<clears throat> or the bottle um, saying whether or not your paint is opaque and how opaque it is. So here I have three different colors from Amsterdam. And as you can see, they all have this little square. So I have an open square here, which means that it's um, very um, translucent. This paint is very translucent because it has an open square. Then I have one that is half full. And that means that it's semi-translucent. So it's somewhere between opaque and translucent. And then here I have one with a filled square. And uh, that means that this one is opaque. So if you want to make sure, um, depending on the effect that you want, that your paint is opaque or isn't opaque, then this is what you have to look for on the packaging. Then there's also these uh, like pluses that Amsterdam has, and that is um, saying about some saying something about light fastness, about how much time it takes before the colors fade. Um, but that's only when you um, have them under uh, museum circumstances. So it means that if you have three pluses, then it's a uh, hundred years or more that the color stays the same, but then you need to hang it in a museum with the perfect conditions, of course. Um, so as I said, I want a color that is opaque. So this one would work. Just not really sure about the contrast with my background. So I'm going to look uh, what else I have here that would work. Um, this one would look great over here, but would not contrast with this area. So what I'm going to do is actually use both of these colors and I'm going to use the pink at the top as a contrast for the teal. And I'm going to use the teal uh, down here as a contrast for the orange. So I'm first going to add the paint. and roll it out. And any excess paint or um, if I don't want to mix it with my new color, I just roll it off on my scrap paper. And then I'll just have them overlap a little bit here. And then I'm going to take this thread and that's going to create, um, again, a mask for the paint on my paper. Birgit, we had a question. What is the yes. difference between translucent versus opaque in your opinion? Okay, so opaque is that you can't see through. So it means that if I have, for instance, uh, white paint, opaque white paint, and I would print on top of this, it would be totally white. And uh, translucent means that you can see through. And that means that if you have a, a color uh, pattern, for instance, on your background paper and you print on top with a translucent color, you will still see the original color and the uh, the texture or the pattern shine through. So you can build up layers that you kind of see through. And if you use opaque uh, paint and you're just covering up everything um, where you put that opaque paint. So I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. We did have one more question just before you continue that next step, please. So okay. when it comes to drying time, I know that we don't recommend using any heat sources, <laughs> but have you personally ever used a handheld fan or anything like that? The only thing that I uh, sometimes use is like a hair dryer on cold setting, but I don't do it very often. I prefer to just let it air dry. And that's also the reason uh, why I have multiple um, 
plates because then if I have something that uh, if I have a paint that has a really long drying time or for instance other products if you have like alcohol inks or uh, stamping inks they usually take quite a while to dry completely and you can't speed them up even if you would uh, want to you can't speed up the drying time of those so uh, it's better to just leave it put it aside and then um, work on uh, on another plate while you're waiting for the for the paint or the ink to dry. But whatever you do, don't put any heat on your plate. It's just not recommended. So as you can see, I really, really rubbed well because this thread is quite thick and I want to make sure that I really go into those open areas. And I'm now going to pick it up to see what happened. So, and here you can see um, <clears throat> what happened is where you still see the teal and the orange, that's the color of the original um, background that I used. And it was kind of blocked off by the thread. And then in the open areas, you see the color that I um, the put on the plate, the pink and the teal. But it also picked up some of that um, leftover paint that was uh, still on the plate with the, the detailed um, yarn from the first print I made. So um, I actually have three different layers now on this print. And then uh, I can make another one because I have uh, still have paint on the plate because this is the paint that was left underneath the, the yarn that I used as a mask. And there's also still a little bit of that first print with the more detailed uh, little lines of the thread I used for the first print. So again, I have two options. Um, to pull up this print. So I can either um, add uh, a new color and just print it on white paper, but I can also decide that I want this on one of my already painted printed backgrounds. Um, so let's find one that would make a nice contrast. So, and what you can do if you are not sure which colors uh, give a good contrast when you print them on top of each other, you can uh, have a look at the color wheel and um, the colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel are usually the best colors to use next to each other uh, regarding contrast. So if you are looking for high contrast, then you can look for colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel but um, you have to be careful because if you mix these colors if you use them uh, wet together on the gel plate then they will create mud so you can use those colors but only um, when you print um, one color on top of the other color that's already dry so if it's still wet then it will mix and it will not um, not create a nice contrast, it will create mud. So I'm going to try and print it on this background and uh, I want this background to show. So I do not want to add uh, a different color of paint because as I explained before, then I would just cover up my background and lose the colors of this sheet of paper. So instead of using um, acrylic paint, I'm going to use Liquitex matte medium to pull up the print. And uh, a matte medium, a gel medium is basically the same as an acrylic paint. It usually has uh, kind of the same consistency. You have them from fluid to um, um, soft body and heavy body. And uh, they can be used for all kinds of ways to change the consistency of your acrylic paint and stuff like that. But in gel printing, I like to use the matte medium to pull a print without changing the color of my background paper. 
So if you have any pattern or texture on your plate that has open spaces and you want to transfer that to an already printed background or an already colored background, then you can use a matte medium because then in the open areas, you will actually see the color of that background paper. And you use it the same way as you use acrylic paint. So you just add uh, a few drops and um, the, the matte medium, especially the fluid one of uh, Liquitex is quite thin. So it spreads a little bit easier than the, uh, than the acrylic paint does. You can also use a soft body gel medium if you like. Uh, and that would probably work perfectly also for this kind of uh, gel printing. But um, I also use my matte medium for uh, collage and stuff like that. And then I really like the, uh, the liquid one, the more fluid one. And I don't want to buy a whole bunch of different uh, mediums when I can do basically everything with only one. So... And this works well. You just have to kind of experiment a little bit about how much you need, how thick your layer needs to be. Um, with the matte medium, it can be a little bit thinner than when you use acrylic paint because it's so fluid and it spreads so easily. It also takes a little bit longer to dry. So I prefer to leave my paper on the plate until the matte medium is completely dry because um, otherwise, because it's so thin and drying a little bit slower, there's a bigger chance that I lift up my paper and um, I'm not actually pulling up all of the paint from the plate because my paper is only um, absorbing the top layer of that matte medium. So I'm just going to leave my paper on here until everything is completely dry. And when you do that, the benefit of doing this, you can also do that with acrylic paint, is that you will be sure that you pull up all of the paint. So if you put paint on the plate and you put paper on top of it and you leave it to dry, you will always pull all of the paint from the plate. That's the benefit. Um, but you have to make sure it's completely dry because if it's not completely dry and your paper um, is a little bit wet because of the paint, then uh, you're more likely to tear your paper. So you either pull the print straight away and hope that you have your layer is thin enough to, to pull up everything, or you leave it on there until it's completely dry. And I'm going to leave it on here. So that means that I have to put it aside for a little moment and um, get out another gel plate to print on. And I realized that I only have one of my alcohol ink plates here. So as you can see, nice and yellow. That's because I use this plate for alcohol inks and the alcohol inks stain the plate. That is the ones that have yellow pigments in them. So my plate turned yellow and I have a couple of these. And um, as you can see, it's all through and you can't get it off, you can't clean it. Uh, once your plate is yellow like this, it will be like this forever, but it does not affect your prints. And you can to you're totally fine printing on it. Um, the only thing is that if you put inks on this or paints on this, that the colors might look differently on the plate than that they actually are because of the yellow background. So for my uh, acrylic paint prints, I prefer to use a plate that's not yellow, but you totally can. So if you have only one plate and you want to use them with alcohol inks and acrylic paints, just go ahead. You can just mix them. Um, and I think I can actually um, just try and do that 
no, I'm I'm just going to leave the hemp rope for uh, for the last. I have another thing that I want to show you that I did with some yarn and um, string. So I took um, toilet paper tubes or uh, from like um, paper towels, and you can cut them smaller. And I just put the string and the yarn around them. I have little, I made a little gap here so I can put it, uh, the string inside and secure it. And then just um, wrapped it around the tube. And I did here with, uh, with the yarn. And I, um, some of you might have seen this because I showed it uh, a couple of times in previous classes, but this is just like a fluffy paint roller that I got from the uh, hardware store. So I actually took a tube like this to the hardware store uh, to see if it would fit and uh, got myself a, a roller that would fit my tubes. And now I can just put the tube over the fluffy paint roller and use it as a textured brayer. And of course, uh, today I'm only showing it with the thread, but you can put anything you like on that tube and create an ongoing pattern. So you could put um, something like uh, self-adhesive foam shapes. Um, you could put uh, lace around it or um, blue little uh, wood veneer shapes or whatever you can think of that would uh, be that you could glue on uh, on a tube you can put on there and then create like an ongoing pattern that you can use on your gel plate which is really fun i actually also um, did a video once about creating these type of tools uh, that you can find on the uh, jelly arts uh, youtube channel focusing on the ongoing pattern with the with the tubes so i'm just going to apply some colors and if there are any questions then this might be the perfect time to ask but maybe maybe everything is clear So I'm just going to roll out my paint again. And there's still a little bit of those hemp rope pieces on my plate. They will show up for quite a while if I don't clean my brayer and my plate. Okay, so now I have paint on the plate and now I can just use my brayer and um, roll over the plate and create a very organic texture. And I can go in different directions. I can also take this one off and then put this one on there. which has, uh, gives a little bit finer lines. And then, of course, I can decide to print it on an already colored background, but I think for now I will just uh, do it on a white sheet of paper because I think that might show better um, the texture that it creates. But of course, you can build up layers with this too. I could also have put, uh, I might do that for my next print, put uh, extra thread on top before I printed it. But here is the texture that this created. So this could be something fun if you want to create background papers uh, with a subtle um, texture in it 
to work on top of it. So not as a standalone print, for instance. I'm going to do one more of those with an already colored background, I think, and then add an extra um, piece of yarn. Let me think about the order of the paints that I'm going to use. I think I'm going to... So this is um, a really nice blue color, but it isn't opaque. And I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white, which is opaque. So it's going to change the color a bit, but it's also going to make it more opaque. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to mix this on the plate. And I can decide to mix it completely, but I can also decide to um, do it like this and have more um, uh, interest in the color, not like a flat color. If you mix it like completely, your color will turn more flat, like uh, maybe a little bit more boring. Um, and clean, and I, I don't like boring and clean. But um, not that clean is always boring, and don't get me wrong, but it's just not my, it's just not my style. But that's the fun about um, gel printing, that uh, whatever your style is, you can do it, uh, you can do it in your own style. Everybody can do gel printing in their own style. So this is uh, creating some texture. And now I'm also going to add that extra piece of yarn on top. I could also add some of that eyelash yarn. I think that would be fun to add here and now I'm going to print on top of which one I think let's do this one place on top of sheet of paper on top and again I have to make sure that I push really well and really into rub into that uh, those open areas and you can feel you can really feel where the thread is because it's really thick so I'm just going to make sure that I go all around these thicker areas and pick up the paint that's in between. And I think that worked quite well. So I don't know if you notice it, but um, so I have the, the color that I put on the plate. And of course I have the texture of the yarn that I put on the plate, but also you see these lines here that, uh, that I created using my um, texture brayer and of course again I have leftover paint on the plate that I can that I can pull and I have not done it today uh, with using a different uh, color of paint this layer um, I showed you how to do the matte medium on a colored background and now I'm just going to print on white paper so I'm going to add color. Um, and of course, I want the contrasting color because I want to see those lines uh, show up in my print. And I think actually because I see the yellow plate, that yellow would look nice with the blue. So I'm going to use yellow 
but I can add more than one color. So how about a reflex rose? Let's do some crazy colors. And a little bit of white maybe. Okay, let's just see how this is going to work out. And as you saw, I just moved my brayer from the top to the bottom without cleaning it in between. And that uh, way I transferred the yellow paint from the top also to the bottom of my plate. And now I'm going to put the paper on top. And I think the layer of paint that I put on the plate might be a little bit thick. So I'm not sure that it will totally pick up all of the dry paint on the plate uh, when I, if I would pull it straight away. So I'm now going to put this one also aside for the paint to dry. And then meanwhile, I can show you the one that I just put aside before with the matte medium. So uh, if everything went well, then I should have transferred the dry paint from the plate to my colored background. Uh, and you will still see the colors of my background and that worked really well. So yeah, it's basically uh, you put what was on the plate on top of a colored background, but you're, you're not changing anything about the colors on the plate or about the colors on on the background. So that's perfect uh, from the matte medium. And um, then I think it's time for the hemp rope. And the hemp rope is... Um, perfect to create like a faux marble feel of prints. So let me see if I have any samples here. I'm pretty sure I have. Here's one. This is one that's made with hemp rope. This is also one and this is also one. So as you can see they have there are like really, really fine lines, very detailed, and it also uh, almost looks like marble. Um, and I have to pick my background first to know which colors I'm going to use for this. So, I can either choose a dark background and uh, print with light colors on top, or I can choose a light, lighter background and print with really dark. I think I'm going to print on this one with like a purple, black and purple maybe, because that will give a really, really nice contrast for the bright pink the reflex rose that I used on this one. So um, I'm real quick just going through the chat. I see somebody had to leave. Well, it's a good thing that this is being recorded and you can just rewatch it when you, whenever you want. And the deco art acrylic paints can definitely be used on the jelly plate and um, especially the um, um, what are they called the little bottles the pre premium not a premium the mixed media I think the mixed media paint or something like that from uh, deco art they are really very 
thin and fluid and they spread very nicely on the plate. Um, gloss gel medium is the same as matte medium. Well, it is also a medium and it's also a gel medium, but the difference is, of course, gloss and matte. And personally, I'm not a big fan of gloss because your entire um, uh, paper will have a, a shine when you use gloss a gel medium. So uh, if you like gloss, then you can use the gloss medium instead of the matte medium because they do the same thing. But the only difference is the one gives a glossy finish and the other one a matte finish. So if you use the matte medium, then the finish will be the same as your acrylic paint, if you use only acrylic paint. And if you use the gloss medium, then you're adding a shine to it. But if you like that, then of course, just uh, you can use that, definitely. So the hemp rope, it's time for the hemp rope. And this is going to be messy because I'm just going to pull this apart. And as you can see, it's like really uh, fine little um, threads, like even finer than um, sewing thread. It's almost like hair. But uh, if you have used... Um, the gel plate for a while, then you know that it's very, um, it's showing like every detail, even a hair will show on the gel plate. Very delicate um, lace or something like that also shows really nicely on the gel plate. So it can never be too thin to gel print with. And I'm just going to pull this completely apart. So I have kind of like almost like a spider web that I can then spread on the plate. I think I need a little bit more because this is not like not covering the entire plate. So I'm just going to see if I have a little bit more. Birgit, we had a question on how would you like to use these prints afterwards and your prints in general? So uh, most of the prints that I make are uh, being used for collage. So I just cut them up and um, create a collage or collage backgrounds with them. Um, sometimes I would take a print like what I could do, for instance, is take a print like this and um, cut out some circles and put some circles on here and then print a solid layer on top. And then I would have like a solid background with uh, circles with the texture uh, showing. And then you can add a little bit of doodling and drawing and then you can use them uh, to decorate, make decorated cards or something like that. Um, I sometimes use them to create uh, little books, little art journals, and then I have already some color on my on my backgrounds, and that makes it easier for me to add more color and start working on them. So I do all kinds of uh, things with them. But if I'm right, you can find I'm I'm not really sure, but no, I'm sure Dominic knows there is um, I think a playlist on the on the Jelly Arts uh, YouTube channel uh, where you can find things that you can do with your gel prints. And there are so many things that you can do with gel prints. Um, and uh, yeah, some people gel print to make like uh, standalone prints that are pieces of art on their own. And some people just use them in all kinds of projects for card making or scrapbooking or um, art journaling. That's a lot of paint. That's a little bit more than I actually need or wanted to. So I have to roll off some of that, but that's fine. I'm just going to mix it. And at some point, my uh, cleanup paper also will be 
used again. As you can see, I just uh, pulled apart the hemp rope on top of my gel plate and there's already a lot of texture in my in my paint and a lot of times uh, some of the hemp rope stays behind on my behind on my prints and uh, adding not only visual but also like actual texture when you go over it with your fingers you will actually feel the threads like being Im embedded into the into the paint which can be fun i mean if you are into texture like real texture then you can decide to uh, to leave the hemp rope on your on your print and if you don't like it you can like rub it off or pull it off when the paint dries but i will show you how to do that And with the hemp rope, it's the same. You can make several prints um, using leftover hemp rope and leftover paint on the plate for uh, additional prints. So I'm going to lift it up. And uh, as you can see, the hemp rope is kind of stuck to my background and uh, still also covering up part of my background paint. So I'm very carefully going to lift up the hemp rope, revealing the color underneath. And I won't get up off everything like straight away. And I can rub it off. I can rub off the excess hemp rope but only once the paint is uh, like dry or at least almost dry because if I do it like straight away I will kind of um, rub away the wet paint and I will lose the the crisp lines so I just have to wait uh, until this is dry before I remove the last bit if i want to i mean you can also decide to leave it on and if you don't want them want those pieces to be uh, hanging loose like this but you want to keep them on your background you can also add a layer of the matte medium and you will just stick them to the background and they will be more flat but uh, i will probably just rub them away once the paint is more dry, because I really like the contrast of the bright colors um, with the with the darker blue and purple that I added. So I can, there is still these little details that uh, were underneath the hemp rope that's on my plate. And also some of that hemp rope stayed behind and is still like sticking to the plate and I can even decide to uh, put some more on and what I can do is I can just put it on there already before I add new paint and just roll it out with the paint which will give uh, a different effect than when you used it as a mask so while I have my plate here, I'm just going to show that too. And also, as you can see, there is quite a lot of the hemp rope on my brayer, which will also create texture when I roll out my paint. So it's going to be um, all kinds of ways that the hemp rope is creating texture. And uh, I'm just going to do something. way out of my normal uh, color range but sometimes that you just have to do that and might surprise you so now i'm just going to roll out the paint with the uh, hemp rope on the plate and as you can see a big part of it will just 
go all around my brayer making a big mess. As I said, it's going to be messy. Ooh, that actually created some nice texture on my cleanup paper. I'm pretty sure that somehow I can use that for some kind of collage somewhere. And I will also explain a little bit about how to clean this. But first I'm going to place my paper on top of the plate. And while we leave this on for a little while, I'm just going to show you how this one turned out. I think I have a few minutes left, so I don't even really remember what I did with this one. Oh yes, I remember. I added color to the leftover paint on my plate. So here we go. Uh, I think that turned out pretty nice. You can really see, I, I'm not sure how well you can see it on your screen, but you can really see the texture of, of the yarn. You can even see that little thread that's around uh, the yarn to, to keep the fibers together. So it's very, very detailed. Of course, you can argue about um, whether or not you like the colors, but um, I think in general, it's a fun technique to use. Um, Here, we yes. have a question. Have you ever used a dry print and put it through the printer in order to print text onto it? Uh, I'm not really sure. I have printed on all kinds of paper, probably, but I, I don't see a reason why you should not do that. I mean, um, yeah, I've printed even on plastic sheets and tissue paper, so... You can definitely also print on uh, uh, on a gel print. Uh, as long as the paper isn't thicker than your printer can handle, of course. I mean, every printer has a certain thickness of paper that is like the max. And um, if you use that and it also has a layer of paint on top, then maybe that's going to be uh, difficult. But for instance, your printer can handle 200 grams and you have... 180 with paint on it and I don't see any reason why it should not work. Uh, I mean it would not it will not damage your printer and and um well yeah you have to try but I don't see why it would ruin your print either so so this is the one with the uh, hemp rope that was left on the plate. And uh, as you can see, it's even more embedded in the paint than the previous one because I um, rolled out my paint on top of, uh, of the hemp rope and you get even more detailed fine lines, like very, very organic background that you can use for all kinds of things. Um, and now I'm thinking, oh yeah, I wanted to tell you about uh, how to clean this. Well, what you can do is uh, I like to take a baby wipe or a wet cloth or uh, maybe a damp uh, sheet of uh, or damp paper towel and you can just click the roller out of the handle. And then uh, I'll just kind of wipe off the biggest part. And as I said, it's messy, but I just wipe off the biggest part of the hemp rope. And then I will just rinse it with water and then, then uh, I can just put it back into the handle and it's good to go again. I think even if I just roll it off on some scrap paper, then it's already 
clean enough to use again. So it's not even that bad. It's only the only thing is that it's now like everywhere on my desk are little bits of that hemp rope and uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after or even in a week I will suddenly find some of these little hairs these little threads in my prints but um, yeah I think it's worth it's worth the mess uh, if you create prints like this let me see if this is dry enough I think it's dry enough now I can just go over it with my fingertips and um, all of the little threads that are still on there will now come off as you can see and then you have a print that's totally smooth and has no threads left on it anymore and then you can use it as any other gel print so um, somebody's saying, have you tried Murphy oil soap to clean? Well, we don't have Murphy oil in the Netherlands. So I haven't tried it, but I know that every gel printer I know from the States that has used Murphy's oil is like uh, really um, very positive about it. Um, also, if you have a brayer that has a thick layer of acrylic paint on it and you put it in like in a bucket with uh, water and murphy oil soap and leave it in there overnight and you can just uh, rinse off all of the acrylic paint the next uh, the next day so that's something that you can definitely try okay so these are the prints that i made today with uh, only um some acrylic paint and uh, a few pieces of um yarn and thread and uh, I, I don't even know I remember which ones I made today and which I made before but um, all of these were made with just do those uh, few ingre ingredients so it's really uh, easy cheap but I think really fun and I hope you uh, enjoyed it too I think you also think it's fun and uh, I hope to see you again uh, for my next Michaels class, which will be on November 1st. And it's the first one of 12 days of card making. And we will make be making holiday cards using uh, masking tape to print on. So I hope to see you again then. Uh, meanwhile, you can watch um, all of our videos on the Jelly Arts YouTube channel and on the Michaels YouTube channel and uh, enjoy hope to see you soon bye bye bye